So what is going on everybody? Welcome back to another episode for Think5 and in this one I want to discuss about open source development because this is something I get a lot of times asked on email, on YouTube or in the DMs as well. So let's start where we can start. What is open source? So open source just means that you as a developer or somebody as a developer has created a piece of software which has been uploaded to sites like GitHub, GitLab, Bitbuckets, you know, these uh, providers which allow you to host their Git repositories or they are running their own Git repository server like maybe like Google. So Google has its own uh, server for that. And there's some licensing stuff like MIT, BSD licenses like these, but we're not going to get into licenses for now. So yeah, that's that's basically it for the open source. That is some sort of piece of source, uh, some sort of software which is hosted somewhere on internet, which is publicly available. That's it. Now the question is, how do you contribute to open source as a developer? Here are five steps you can follow exactly to become an open source developer to contribute to make your first pull request to open your, you know, just first contribution to any repository. Step number one is you actually have to learn the technology itself. Now, I cannot stress this enough. A lot of people want to be an open source developer, um, but they just decided to go that road when they wake up this morning. That is not how it works. You have to learn the technology in which you want to contribute to. For example, if you want to contribute to React, you have to be able to read, learn to read JavaScript. You have to be able to learn to read a React code. Well, for the most part, but yeah, you have to be able to uh, learn to read TypeScript, you know, maybe like Babel configuration, some configuration files, how the you know compilation process works, all that stuff. So you have to be able to understand technology a little bit, not not like very in depth. For example, the example for React was not perfect. Um, think about any small plugin which is made for React. So you have to be able to, you know, just able to read JSX. You have to be able to understand how it all works. Step number one, learn the technology. When you're done with learning, step number two, is actually uh, this is like how I recommend people is to take a look at whatever small projects you have done in the past you know while learning or whatever you were doing like creating your own mini app or website or whatever and see all the library libraries and all the dependencies which you were using as a developer for example if you're creating a react app it's very likely you're using react react dom react router dom you know some sort of plugin or widget which um, which is built for react which is not very popular or maybe you know not very used as well so make a list of all those things which you have used as a dependency and most likely they would be open source right so if you're into web development ecosystem it is very probable that they, that part is open source I, I i haven't really seen um you know any popular package which is not open source so you would be able to find its source code on most most likely github Right. So when you do the step number two, that is listing out all the libraries and all the packages you have used, um, it's time to move on step number three. Step number three is filter out the repositories, filter out the libraries which are huge, like React or Webpack or Babel, as a matter of fact. Now, this might not be true for all people, but this mostly works because um, the thing which with huge code bases is that you, you're gonna get lost really quick in that. Uh, by that what I mean is that if you start working, you know, cloning Webpack or Babel or stuff like that, the code base is huge and you're gonna be stuck into, you know, just reading, figuring out all that stuff by yourself, especially when you're beginning. So filter out all the libraries which are basically, um, you know, small in size, compact plugins maybe. Once you do that, the next step is to actually find issues which are labeled as good first time issues or you know first timer issues. You can do that by going to the tabs, the issues tab in GitHub and seeing that you know what, which issues are listed at first as good first issues. That really helps you to understand a very small problem and solve it. And my final tip for you guys is to not be afraid to contribute to open source. It is not hard, it is not difficult it is not rocket science to contribute to any open source projects. You can do it. Of course, you just have to put in a little bit of work and do a little bit of research. That's it. That's all it takes to become an open source developer and help you learn. That's all for five minutes and I'll see you pretty soon in the next one.